Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. We are here today to talk about a massive update coming to Dragalia Lost and changing completely how summoning works in this game. So starting with the maintenance on April 25th, if you haven't read this yet, if you're not aware of this yet, worm prints are going to be removed from future summoning. They are going to be removed from the summoning pool altogether. Now this is a crazy change to me as although we'd seen a lot of player feedback about being disappointed with getting worm prints, wanting to summon dragons, wanting to summon adventurers, in my opinion, Dragalia was handling it pretty well. They were moving in a gradual direction where they were strengthening worm prints with things like the weapon specific worm prints, and they were reducing the number of featured worm prints on showcases from two new five stars to only one new five star. So I am really shocked to see this move I have to assume it's been well considered and well thought out and that there's a plan going forward, but this is absolutely a crazy change to how summoning works in the game. And as we'll see, now Worm Prince will be acquired through an in-game shop. So just this week, I spent 28,000 Wormite targeting a specific 5-star Worm Print for response. So hopefully this means that will never happen to anyone again. Now we'll go into detail as to why that really wasn't so bad for me when it comes to how Worm Prince will be acquired from now on, but first I just want to talk about what I think this means to the game and why this type of change is so important. So to me, this signals that Psy Games and Nintendo are very interested in the long-term health of this game, the happiness of the player base, because this is a fairly generous move. And I don't think this is a move that you make if you're depending on whales for a lot of your game's income because this makes it exceptionally easy to get any worm print to complete the entire collection of worm prints just by filling out the shop and it should make it easier to target five star adventurers and five star dragons basically throwing my summoning advice video completely out the window so we don't yet know how high an appearance rate featured adventurers and dragons will have after these changes but we do know that the total appearance rate for 5 stars is not going to change, and obviously worm prints are not going to be included in that anymore. So we have to assume that, you know, it's going to be more likely that we'll get adventures and dragons. Obviously there's no worm prints, so we're not going to be getting those. But the other thing I want to make a comparison to is actually Fire Emblem Heroes. Especially since we are getting a crossover event very soon. So we also found out that that update when that maintenance will happen is basically the launch of Fire Emblem Lost Heroes, the crossover event. But Fire Emblem recently had a Fae channel where they changed the summoning pool and their approach was to remove a lot of older units and make it so that on new hero banners and special hero banners going forward, those units wouldn't appear. And I think this was a very good change. I think people are happy with it. There's some controversy in the community, but I think for the most part, if you really wanted to plus 10 those units, you had to wait for a focus banner anyway that would be a rerun banner or a skills banner. So I don't think it's too big of a change, and I think ultimately it leads to better pity breakers. But obviously, we're not here to talk about Fire Emblem, but the comparison I would say is, this is like if instead of just removing those heroes from the pool, they added them to the Grail Shop or at least added combat manuals of them to the Grail shop and just said, now you can just get any of these heroes whenever you want, and you can get their fodder whenever you want, you can do any of that. So this is such a huge change because Worm Prints now becomes something that any free-to-play player, any player can strive toward. It doesn't matter your luck in the gotcha. And it continues to push the game in a direction where it's really about creating your own experience Pick an adventure you like, try to bring them to their max potential, try to find the worm prints that you think will work best on them, and hopefully having more choice by being able to select whatever worm print we want leads to more creativity, more build ideas, it leads to more experimentation, and it's not just me or some other source giving you a tier list and saying, hey, you always want this worm print for this person or this unit, because there's no PvP in this game anyway. So there's not a huge emphasis on being optimal. It is about fun. It's a game. It's a co-op game. 
So I really hope that that's the case and that we see even more variety. We see more Elaine's in High Midgard Stormer because they can get a stun res print that makes them feel comfortable to going to that fight. We see more Jacobs in High Brunhilde. We see more Zardins and Rexes because now that four star worm print that you were missing or didn't feel comfortable spending your silver keys on, you can just go ahead and pick it up in the shop. So I think this is an absolutely positive change. I am enamored with this change. I hope that this means Dragalia can continue making money and I hope if you are interested in supporting the game, maybe this will encourage you to make small purchases like for the Dream Summon Special if you hadn't purchased before. Just because I think that this makes it so much easier if you're a whale to not want to spend too much money because you can just get worm prints this way. On the other hand, maybe you'll want to spend money because it's easier to target 5-star adventure or dragons though. So I see this as a positive change, absolutely positive. As far as the conversion rates go, it looks like if you're starting from scratch and you want to max unbind a 5-star worm print, that's going to cost you 37,000 Eldwater. And for a 4-star, it's going to cost you 17,000 Eldwater. And then for a 3-star, it's going to cost you 1700 Eldwater, but really I wouldn't recommend going for many of those three stars. So we don't know if seasonal worm prints are going to be in this shop, and if they're not in the shop, you have to wonder, well, are seasonal banners going to have worm prints, or how are seasonal worm prints going to be distributed in the future? Maybe there'll be limited time purchases in the shop in the future where it's important to have that Eldwater ready. We also don't know what's going to happen as far as our wormite income. Because if there's only dragons and adventurers in the pool, there are fewer things to summon for. There's less of a need to summon, and it could be the case that we're going to get reduced Wormite income going forward just because, well, summoning will still be kind of disappointing if you already have a lot of adventurers and have a lot of the dragons. You're still going to be getting a lot of duplicates, and in the case of adventurers, you don't even have a choice of whether you want to keep or sell them. So that is one of my concerns with this is like, I have most of the 4-star adventurers, all of the 3-stars, I'm missing some 5-stars, and I have all the 4-star and 3-star dragons, I'm missing some 5-stars. Well, is it going to be enjoyable to summon for me at all now, because so much of it is going to be the same? And I think it will be, I think it will be just because of the appeal of new units and going for focus units, but that is a question mark for me, is what's going to happen to our summoning? How is our Eldwater income going to change in order to account for this? And we do get some detail here about how much Eldwater we'll receive from duplicates going forward. So from now on, a duplicate adventurer, a 5-star, will get you 8,500 Eldwater, which is close to the amount you would need for your final few unbindings on a 5-star worm print. And this also is the new amount that you'll get when you part ways with a 5-star dragon. And here are the amounts for 4 stars, before it was 1,000 and after it's going to be 2,200. So these are generous increases. Some would say they are necessary increases with this new system, and I think even before then, people were pretty disappointed with only getting 3,000 Eldwater for their duplicate 5 stars, especially when it's someone you've gotten for like 5 times in a row. So I think this is a positive change too. And there's going to be no change when it comes to three stars as far as the Eldwater goes. The other good thing is we're actually going to get back compensated. So this is Side Games, the Nintendo flexing that they have all the data in the world on this game. Just like at the beginning of the game when they changed wings and how those work and gave us a max cap of 12, they back compensated us ashes, blessed ashes, based on how many wings we would have gotten from level ups. So this is similar. If you have already sold any dragons at 4 star or 5 star, or if you've ever gotten a duplicate 5 star adventurer, or if you've ever gotten a duplicate 4 star adventurer, you are going to be gifted the difference in Eldwater from before to after. So for every duplicate 4 star you ever got before, you're going to get 1200 Eldwater as of this update in your box. For every duplicate 5 star adventurer, you're going to get 5500 Eldwater. So, absolutely crazy that they can actually go back and do this. And that could mean a ton of Eldwater. 
So looking at it roughly, I did the math. It seems like there's about 25, 26 four-star worm prints and about 35 star worm prints. Maybe reverse those, but in any case, the way it turns out, it seems like you need about 1,500,000 Eldwater. And if you have that much, you could just buy and max out from scratch every worm print currently in the game that's in the gotcha pool. So I don't really know what to think about that. I mean, you're gonna have so many options available to you, which is good. Of course, we'll have to wait and see all of the details, but it's just unbelievable to me. I mean, as far as guides go, you can easily emulate the worm print setup that somebody else has going forward. Another question mark will be how much consecrated water we're going to get because that's used to level up worm prints, and that can be in short supply of time, so hopefully we'll get more. As far as what else we'll get though is we're getting a thank you gift, so we're going to get 4,500 Wormite, enough for three tenfolds, and 25,000 Eldwater, which will also come out on this day. That is going to be a huge day for Dragalia right at the beginning of Golden Week, so maybe that portends a very exciting event. I'm hoping it's going to be a raid event for Fire Emblem Heroes, Fire Emblem Lost Heroes, the crossover. And to me, it seems like there will probably be a banner, because if you're going to have this summoning change... You want an exciting banner to show that off. So I really think that it's not just going to be a free adventure. I think there's going to be a banner for this now. And so I'm going to start saving for this. At first, I read a lot of your comments and you said that a lot of side games crossovers, it is free. The adventures you get are free and limited from that. I think we'll probably get a free adventure if it's a raid. But then there will also be a banner to go along with this because there has to be a good banner for that new change. So that's just my thought on that. Dragon Special is live, Void Agni is live. I haven't taken a look at Void Agni yet. I'm going to do that later today. All in all, I am absolutely amazed that this summoning change is happening. I am very excited. You can see I went ahead and purchased there for my dream summon because I wanted to show my support for the game after making a big change like this. So I'm gonna collect my rewards. I did get the $8 beginners pack. So now I've spent a total of $18 in the game since it launched. Not too bad, and we're gonna purchase. And I do think now, with how much easier it should be to get five-star dragons, there is a lot of appeal. It's more realistic than ever before that you will actually be able to max and bind some of these five-star dragons, despite the income of Sunlight Ores being fairly slow, or fairly low and slow to accrue. But in the end, I am going to just go for a favorite unit. I didn't get her in any summoning session, and she's not on focus in Dragon Special. So we are going for Nefaria, and I thought I'd share this with you. I don't think there's any cool summoning animation. I think she's just going to show up in our barracks in our collection. So we'll show her off here. Let's see. She's going to be at level 1. Yep, we have Nefaria now. So really excited to get her too. Hopefully you were able to make a decision and check your email because the giveaway has ended. So I'm contacting the winners and hopefully you'll be able to put those $30 gift cards to good use. Let's go ahead and level up our Nefaria and I'll talk briefly about Dragon Special. We'll come back and do a separate video on Void Agni once I have some more impressions about that. As far as Dragon Special goes, I would honestly wait, although this is one of the more lucrative showcases. If you haven't beaten Hybernhilda, then you should know that Zanefried and Thaniel are on focus. Poliahu is also on focus at 4 star and Leviathan is on focus at 5 star. So if you haven't beaten Hybernhilda, there is some appeal, there is some reason that you would want to summon on it. Otherwise, Garuda is not the greatest at 5 star, although she may be necessary, she'll probably at least be good. On low end for high mercury, she might even be necessary depending how much HP you need in that fight. So that is a consideration, but I don't think she's one of the better 5-star dragons. Cupid is absolutely outstanding though, so he is a very appealing and good dragon. As for me though, I am just going to wait because of the Fire Emblem Lost Heroes coming up. Even if there's a chance that that is going to be a showcase and not just a free thing then I want to have some amount of resources dedicated to that, and maybe we'll even get a new bow unit for our collection. Maybe Lynn will be wielding a bow instead of a blade. We're going to have to wait and see. 
But in my opinion, I would just wait on Dragon Special. I don't think it's really worth summoning for right now. With the amount of information that we have, I just think that you're going to put yourself in a better position by waiting, especially waiting until the end of that showcase. It is safe now to uh, go ahead and spend your Dream Summon if you want to, because we know that the Dragon Special Showcase is going to last longer than that Dream Summon duration. Otherwise, everyone, that's pretty much going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear what you think about these changes. Is this enough to satisfy you? Do you feel like the summoning pool, the summoning situation has been resolved? Do you think that this was a step in the right direction? Is anybody disappointed that worm prints are going to be removed? I am very, very curious to hear what you have to say. So as always, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.